Uh, one of the demos that I like to do with my students is to show them that not all salts are neutral. Later on, when they do a titration, they frequently expect that the end point's going to occur when the pH is 7, and they need to know that it depends on the acid and the base that they're using. So there's a couple key concepts that we need to talk about, and it's pretty easy for the kids to understand these. I define a salt as the product of an acid-base neutralization, and I usually use hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, so I have an acid and a base, and we make a salt, NaCl, and water. Okay. And I tell them that all salts can be considered the product of an acid-base neutralization. And a salt is just going to be a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, and that's a salt. So they are expecting. All right, besides sodium chloride, then magnesium sulfate's a salt, and we can go on and on through the list. We need to memorize the six strong acids, and these are the six acids that they will run into in the course. Perchloric, hydroiodic, hydrobromic, hydrochloric, sulfuric, and nitric. And I tell them, for the purposes of our course, any other acid can be considered a weak acid. And we've already talked about the fact that strong acids are 100% ionized in water. They have very, very weak conjugate bases. There's no tendency for that reverse reaction to occur once you put the salt in water. I mean, excuse me, once, once this acid's in water because it's such a strong proton donor. And then I define the strong bases as the hydroxides of family one and family two. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base, potassium hydroxide, et cetera. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to look at what happens when I put a salt in water that's not one of these strong salts. So there's a universal pH chart here where green is neutral, and towards the red end is going to be acidic, and over towards violet, blue, those are the basic salts. So I'm going to come over here. This works actually very well on, the over, on your overhead projector, if you want to do it on the overhead projector. I've taken distilled water, and I've added universal indicator to it. If it, if it. if it isn't green, you can adjust it by either adding a little base or a little acid, depending on the color that you have. But we're going to put that in each of these Petri dishes. And I'm going to start out with aluminum chloride and ask the students to observe what happens when I put aluminum chloride in the water. Or, you know, it's water with indicator in it. Oh. It turns red. So red indicates an acid, right? Let's go back to the board for a minute then. Aluminum chloride, remember I've already told them that every salt could be considered to be the product of an acid-base neutralization. So what acid would this have come from? Well, hydrochloric acid. But the base would have to be aluminum hydroxide. So I'm not worried about balancing it here. But what we've got is a salt that comes from a strong acid and a weak base. Weak because it's not a, from family one or family two. So when you have a strong acid and a weak base, your salt is acidic. All right? And I call these the parent acid and the parent base for my salt. So using that, let's go back over and try some other salts. Let's take sodium chloride. Mm. 
Not too exciting. Well, what would be the parent acid and the parent base for sodium chloride? Well, it comes from sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, right? We did that already. So we have a strong acid and a strong base. So it's neutral. How about sodium bicarbonate? Figure out the parent acid and the parent base, and then let's see if it matches our predictions. We're going to have sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid. Okay, let's see what happens. And they can look on the chart and see that the blue color is basic. So baking soda is slightly basic. All right, let's try keeping up this predicting. If we use ammonium chloride, well, I make them find the parent acid, the parent base. Now, in this case, we don't have a metal, but we have a positive ion. Okay. And it's one of the ones that they always have to learn anyway, so that doesn't throw my kids. They'll go, oh, ammonium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, but we've got a weak base and a strong acid. Let's see if we get acidic solution because If a little's good, a lot's better, right? So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, it's acidic. Not quite as acidic as the aluminum chloride, but it's acidic. And our last one, sodium phosphate. I give them a minute to come up with the parent acid and the parent base. And we see that we've got a strong base and a weak acid. So with a strong base and a weak acid, we would expect, oops, and the chunks really don't mean anything. They've purple, so that's a very strong base. And in fact, you can buy sodium phosphate for cleaning purposes. Tri um, trisodium phosphate is a very good cleaner and also strongly basic. So with this, it sets the foundation for later when we do titrations of acids and bases that they'll realize that if they're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, that the final pH is going to be above 7 because the salt that they're forming comes from a strong base and a weak acid. Now, at this point, if you had you know, advanced students, you could also use it to talk about hydrolysis and go through the KAs and the other calculations for this. But even with beginning students, this is simple enough for them to understand what's going on. All right, what we've got with our strong acid, when we put it in water, it completely ionizes. Okay, so we've got, if we use bronsted lorry theory, we have conjugate acid-base pairs. This is the acid. This is its conjugate base. That reaction in the reverse direction, though, tends not to happen because HCl is a strong proton donor. Okay, so the ion that comes from any of your strong acids doesn't react with water. You put the chloride ion in water, and you're going to get no reaction. Okay. Now, let's take a weak acid, though. If I take hydrofluoric acid, which I'm not going to ever do, but it's a nice example because it's just a binary acid, that's a weak acid. If I add it to water, those fluoride ions, it turns out that this only ionizes to a small extent. So when I'm looking at a solution of hydrofluoric acid, 
it's predominantly in the molecular form because this reaction has a strong tendency to occur. In other words, the conjugate base, the fluoride ion, is a pretty good proton acceptor. Okay? This is not a good proton donor. So when you put the fluoride ion in water, it tends to pick up a proton and we form a basic solution. And that's the reason why the salts that come from either weak acids or weak bases react with the water and we use the term hydrolysis to describe the behavior of those ions. Thank you.